This video is about OSHA's regulation on occupational noise exposure. We will be discussing the basics of sound, dangerous noise levels, the key elements of OSHA's hearing conservation program, which are noise reduction and hearing protection, training, monitoring, and testing. Let's begin with the basics of sound. Sound is produced by changes in normal atmospheric pressure that are detectable by our ears. This graph shows the basic elements of sound, which are loudness and pitch, also referred to as intensity and frequency of sound. Noise is described as unwanted sound. Noise may be a constant passive noise or short pulses of a repetitive or non-repetitive impulsive noise. The frequency of sounds is measured in hertz. The loudness of sound is measured in decibels. One decibel is the threshold of hearing. 140 decibels is the threshold of pain. Here are examples of common sounds and their loudness in decibels. Noise is considered safe when below 80 decibels. An increased risk of hearing loss exists to workers if exposed to sound levels exceeding 115 decibels or a constant exposure to noise greater than 85 decibels over an eight hour workday. These dangerous levels of noise can cause damage to the fragile human inner ear, which is often seen as a gradual hearing loss of high frequency and then low frequency sound. OSHA requires that companies implement a hearing conservation program when employees will be exposed to noise levels above the action level of 85 decibels or higher over an eight hour work period. Also, exposure to impulsive noise or impact noise should not exceed 140 decibels. Permissible noise exposure is shown here in table G-16 of the code. When these levels are exceeded, employers are required to find a way to reduce the noise. First of all, let's discuss noise reduction and hearing protection of the hearing conservation program. OSHA requires employers to make feasible attempts at noise reduction through administrative or engineering controls. If these efforts fail, Personal protective equipment must be provided. Administrative controls are procedures that employers can adopt in order to reduce employee exposure to loud noise, such as doing noisy work when fewer employees are present, assigning employees to work in other areas when they have reached their exposure limits, and by providing quiet areas away from excessive noise. Engineering controls involve making changes to equipment or redirecting the path of noise, such as switching to less noisy equipment, re-engineering noisy parts, working to reduce vibration and machinery, or creating sound barrier enclosures around noisy machinery or parts. When employers cannot reduce noise to acceptable levels with either administrative or engineering controls, they must provide employees with personal protective equipment. Three common types of hearing protection are earmuffs, canal caps, Earplugs. Employees must be given a selection of suitable options. 
and employers must see that the personal protective equipment is properly fitted and that the employees are trained in its use of PPE. They must ensure that employees are using their hearing protection and using it correctly. The second part of hearing conservation programs is training. When employees are exposed to noise above the action level, employers are required to institute a training program and ensure employee participation in the program. Annual training is required and must ensure that employees are informed of the effects of noise on hearing. The purpose of hearing protectors, capabilities of various types, and instructions on proper selection, fitting, use, and care. Finally, the purpose of autometric testing and the procedures used in this testing. Monitoring is the third part of an OSHA approved hearing conservation program. Employers are required to develop and implement a monitoring program when employees are exposed to noise at or above the action level. Sound level meters and dosimeters are used for monitoring. Sound maps of various areas of the building are used to locate noisy areas and help pinpoint noise sources. OSHA requires that all noise in the 80 to 130 decibel range to be integrated into noise measurements. Monitoring must be repeated as required when any change in production process equipment or controls increases employee noise exposure. Employers must notify each employee of monitoring results when noise is at or exceeds the action level. Employees or their representatives must be allowed to observe the measurements during the monitoring procedures. Finally, let's discuss requirements for testing as part of a hearing conservation program. When noise exposure meets or exceeds action levels, employers are required to establish and maintain an audiometric testing program. Testing must be provided by employees free of cost and must be performed by a licensed or certified audiologist, otolaryngologist, or a physician, or by a technician who meets certain requirements and performs under the supervision of one of these providers. Audiogram results can show employee hearing loss. An initial audiogram must be provided within six months of exposure to noise at or above the action level. This audiogram will provide a baseline against which future audiograms will be compared. Additional audiograms must be obtained by the employer at least once per year. For any year after the baseline audiogram in which the employee is exposed to noise at or above the action level. When comparing audiogram, employers must be alert to the standard threshold shift. This shift is defined as the change in hearing threshold relative to the baseline audiogram of an average of 10 or more decibels at the frequencies of 2, 3, and 4,000 hertz in either ear. Audiograms. Employers are required to make comparisons to determine if a standard threshold shift has occurred. 
If so, the employer may ask for a retest within 30 days. If the test shows a standard threshold shift, the employer must notify the employee with it in writing within 21 days. Your hearing is extremely valuable. Employers and employees must work together to protect this important ability. OSHA regulations of occupational noise exposure provide extensive guidelines and impose legal requirements that help prevent hearing loss in the workplace.